Welcome to this video presentation on uh, discrete systems. In this example we're going to take a look at a particular discrete system called uh, a moving averager. And the idea behind a moving averager is that it will take a, a sequence of numbers or a discrete signal that has fast changes in it and smooth out the fast changes. So I hope um, that you understand what that statement means by the end of the, the presentation. Um, so we're going to take a signal with fast changes and smooth out those fast changes using this discrete system. Um, so just taking a quick look at the discrete system, it has four multipliers in it. and This is referred to as a four tap moving averager. Five tap would have five multipliers uh, and so on. Um, but let's focus on this system anyway. So we have four, the, output, the output of the four multipliers has been added together to produce some output, y of n. Um, now in order to appreciate what this system is doing, I'm going to take a look at the actual sequence of numbers. It doesn't mean much to us when we see the sequence of numbers like that. Let's uh, plot them in MATLAB. So switching over to MATLAB, I have my signal x there which has all my sequence of numbers. and I'm just going to plot x. So there's my data uh, plotted. Now I'm not showing each individual discrete sample in this case. I'm just showing um, the, the samples connected together just because it's easier to visualize the signal like that. Um, now what let's let's maybe we'll try to contextualize this data. What does it actually mean? So we'll, we'll use an example of um, a, a tank of chemical being filled up. So it's a liquid tank of chemical that's been filled up and the liquid chemical uh, has been gradually filled up but it's been it's sloshing around and the sensor that we have um, is 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 being forced to move up and down in sympathy with the sloshing chemical, uh, but the 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 tank is filling up gradually like this. Okay, and that 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 um, situation can occur with I don't know the, the your petrol tank in your car, but it's a fairly common thing to happen. Um, so this is what the data represents in our example. Okay, we'll just imagine that it's representing a a chemical being filled up in a, in a tank and the, the, the chemical has been sloshed around. So let's just move back to the main drawing area now that we've some idea about what this data could represent. And the important thing about the data was that it had some fast changes in it and the fast changes were due to the sloshing of the liquid. Um, so now let's just take a look at well how does this system actually work? What will the output of my sequence output of my system be uh, if I pass these numbers through the system. And we'll go through a few examples first of all. So uh, we'll take the first input which is a value of 35 and my value of 35 we push onto my system and there'll be zeros on these branches because we, we'll assume that there's zeros. We're not sure what's there but we'll assume there's zeros and this first input will be multiplied by 0 0.25 to give me 8.75 and each of these will have zeros on them, so the outputs of all these multipliers will be zero. And my first output will be 8.75. So let's just clear all that and record the result. So we've recorded in, in yellow, 8.75. And let's move on to our next input. So the value of 30 has been pushed onto the system. Now the delay operator will play its part and the the value that appeared up here on the previous iteration will now appear down here. So we'll have a th value of 35 uh, on this branch. So we'll have out of this multiplier 8.75 and out of this multiplier 7.5. These two will have zeros so my first next output will be 16.25. So 16.25 will appear here. So again let's clear all that. We'll record the result in yellow. And Let's think about our next input, which will be um, a value of 45. And I'll go through one more example after this, but hopefully you're seeing how, well, mainly how the delay operators work. Um, so what appeared on this branch in the previous iteration? Well, there was a value of 30 there, so uh, that'll appear down here now. So the delay operator causes the delay, a sample delay. Uh, so value of 30 appear here, and likewise, 35 will appear here because it was up in this branch previously. So we'll multiplier outputs will be 8.75 and 7.5 again. And the output of this one will be 11.25. So 
So the 11.25 and the 8.75 will be 20. So add it together with 7.5 will give me 27.5. So that'll be my next output, 27.5. Um, so let's just clear that and record the result again in yellow. Um, so that was 27.5 we said. And the next input will be a value of 55. So I'm just going to do one more uh, and then I'll just speed things up a little bit. So we have 55 there. Then of course what should appear here is 45. What should appear here is the previous value which was 30 and here will be 35. Okay. And let's just work out the outputs of each of the multipliers. So the multipliers are basically dividing by 4. That'll be 8.75, 7.5, um, um, 11.25 and 13.75. So our next output will be well, these numbers added together, we've already done it, those three will be 27.5. Added together with 13.75 will be 41.25. I think that looks right. So 41.25 will be our next output. And um, let's just clear all that and record the result. 41.25. Okay, now you can follow on so the next input of course is going to be 40 and you'll see how the sequence of numbers is generated okay now hopefully you can follow that process and I'm just going to show you the result now I'm just going to clear that not that we'll clear that and that and we'll show you the outputs because I've calculated them earlier on at least I did that in MATLAB to save myself some time so let's just show the numbers Okay, um, and I'm also just going to quickly show you how I did that in MATLAB. It might make a huge amount of sense, but we'll just show you anyway. Um, there's a, a nice function that will work out all these things for you, uh, the output of a system um, for you. Um, it uses this function filter, so maybe if you do have help on filter, you will be able to work this out. But I, I just running that command um, determined all my values of y. Okay, so there's all my values of y. And what I'm going to do is just, well, let's plot x again. And there's my input value. Input values are plotted there. And let's just plot my output values over that. So I'm just going to hold on, which will allow me to plot choose two plots to the same figure. So I'm going to plot y in red to the output. So this is the sequence of numbers. Let's, this is the sequence of numbers that we've got out of our discrete system. Let's just quick click back. So this is the sequence of numbers we've got out of our system, which you should be able to calculate. And we're just going to plot it. And we can see that, okay, we have a smoothed version of our input signal and that can be very useful because we have a better idea of how quickly our tank is filling up so these fast changes here were really as a result of the sloshing around of the chemical rather than the actual um, increase in the chemical in the tank whereas this smoothed version of the signal is a much better representation um, so that's a very nice neat um, example of a discrete system that people should be able to understand fairly easily. Um, now we can have uh, more taps added to our filter and that will smooth out um, smooth out the signal to a greater degree and I think I will I'll do that in the next presentation. I'll show you a MATLAB demo of how we can um, increase the number of taps and uh, hopefully all that will make sense. Okay, so thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next presentation.